AMD loves you. All flights in the United States were grounded yesterday for a little bit, and guess what? Say it ain't so. But Skull and Bones is delayed again. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story, we're gonna be talking about how we finally have some information from AMD that they did not release during their CES keynote regarding their X3D chips that everybody is hotly anticipating. Initial rumors and leaks were pointing that these behemoths of gaming CPUs should be launching sometime on February 16th. However, AMD confirming on their own product page with these chips that they will actually be coming out two days earlier to just express their heartfelt affection for all of the hope and adoration that you give them and their profits. So that's gonna be coming out on Valentine's Day, my friends. February 14th is when you can expect to slap the 7800, 7900, or 7950X3D into your brand new system because they just want you to know how much they heart you. And they also want to help with people understanding their new GPU architecture, providing a little bit of love on that front as well, with them releasing a 606 page booklet on the RDNA 3 instruction set architecture. So there's an ISA reference guide for people to check out in case they want deep dives on the micro architecture and how AMD is implementing it. And hopefully we'll make it so that developers can take better advantage of these brand new graphics cards that they're going to be bringing out. And I'm going to be bringing some crypto stocks to you. OK, Bitcoin up half a percent to be at 17554 Ethereum up just to, I don't know, up to 1342 and Dogecoin down, I don't know either, to 7.6 cents and Tesla up 3.6% on the day to close at 123. This is coming after they announced that they're going to be expanding their Texas factory or at least up planning to do that with a $770 million expansion at their Austin factory, including adding in a new cathode factory and making sure that they can do more battery production in-house at Austin. It looks like things are turning up for them and it looks like Twitter is turning upside down because they actually want to reframe how you're actually using the app, which makes a lot of sense, especially with how Elon Musk is trying to recoup his costs on that application and instead turning the feed into something that's more akin to a for you page from TikTok, including video videos, infinite scrolling, and separating out from the people that you actually follow, making it so that you have two different distinct sections, one that's algorithmically generated there to keep you constantly involved in a new stream of content that people are ever providing for you, and one for the things that you actually want to see, and that you don't get by default because it doesn't make as much money to do that. But it makes us a little bit of money to talk about UFD deals because we get an affiliate kickback every time you purchase from us, and Reese is going to give you the best hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hey, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I'm Reese. it's deal time, and let's jump straight in with this Team Group T-Force Delta RGB 32 gig kit of DDR5 RAM running at 6,000 megahertz at CL38. You can pick this kit up for $149.99, which is $190 or 55% off. But next we have this Focus Odin 5 F3, which is a foldable 3D printer with a print resolution of 0.1 millimeters. It's currently going for only $189.99, which is $140 or 42% off. But those are the deals for today, so don't forget you can find the links to these and more in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. Can you find me a good deal for tomorrow on the Surface Duo? Oh, no, you can't because Microsoft killed it. Ah, oh, shucks. Well, it's official. Microsoft is officially abandoning the Surface Duo project, which was their foldable device that actually did not fold. It was two screens that had a hinge, which Microsoft does really good things with their hinges, especially on their Surface devices. They brought it to the phone. It did it really sell well. The second iteration had a lot of regressions in physical design from the first generation and never really got adopted. They were supposed to be making a third one, and now that has been canned, where they're not going to be moving forward with that. However, Microsoft still saying that they're eager to expand their line of Android smartphone offerings and that they're going to be all in on that. And there's allegedly some things coming in with foldable devices more akin to like the Samsung flip style stuff or the fold style stuff rather than the two different separated screens with the hinge mechanism. So Microsoft not going to be charging you for the Surface Duo 3, but OpenAI looking to charge you for ChatGPT with them talking about how they're going to roll out 
chat GPT professional and trying to find out how they can monetize a premium version of the chat bot. However, there are some like strange things popping up in this, especially with them saying that they're starting to think about how to monetize chat GPT in order to ensure the tool's long term viability, which is just a I guess that's just how tech companies work, build the product stack first and then figure out how to monetize rather than have viable business strategies throughout the entire process and know how exactly you're going to do it with the wild success of chat GPT. It does make sense that they would try to capitalize on it. However, it's not quite clear what the path forward for OpenAI is. Microsoft is pondering investing 10 billion more dollars into them so they could get by potentially without monetizing it directly to the consumer. But I also feel kind of mixed on this and you guys can respond to this down below in the comments but it feels like the chat gpt these neural networks these ai developments that are happening are simply like tools that are going to enhance other parts of workflow but they're going to become so ubiquitous and a lot of the major players are going to develop them that like we're actually likely not going to pay for them just like we don't pay for Google search. It's going to become something like that where it's like a default access thing where it's you get monetized some way differently through it rather than actually paying to use the same thing like you don't pay to use Google you pay in the form of Google Ads etc chat GPT always felt to me like that it's the start of that and bringing AI into a more robust complete ecosystem for just neural network tools but maybe that's naive of me and I'm just thinking that the way internet 2.0 happened is the way web 3 is gonna go which is AI web 3 or is that different I, I don't know the buzzwords anymore, but I do know that if you were on a plane yesterday or you wanted to get on one, it was a topsy turvy time because the FAA had to ground every single US flight due to a computer outage where they had to issue a notice to air missions in order to just stop flying, okay? If you're in flight, come back home. If you're going, you're not going anywhere. And that happened early in the morning yesterday up until 9.30 a.m. where they said that their computer systems were coming back online and things were getting fixed. Hundreds of flights were delayed, as well as many more being canceled. The press secretary for the United States president said that it doesn't appear to be a cybersecurity event or a cyber attack, but rather just appeared to be a regular old computer glitch, which is, I don't know if that's better or worse. But you know what's better than being in the sky? Being in space, not just in my head, okay? I like it, okay? And I especially like the James Webb Space Telescope. And we're getting details of the JWST examining an exoplanet for the first time and pointing its little mirrors at a 41 light year away Earth-sized planet, confirming that it's about 99% of Earth's diameter, which makes it about close to home. And, you know, we could maybe potentially never get there. I'm never gonna get there. Anyways, they're also going to be examining what the atmosphere of this planet is made of because JWST does have that capacity However, they are ruling out that it doesn't have specific ones like it's not going to be like on Titan where it's just like pure methane, but it's also going to be a planet that's 300 degrees Celsius. So likely not habitable again to me, although I wouldn't survive the trip. And I don't know if I'm going to survive the trip for Skull and Bones. I talked to Kyler about this and he he was upset. Ah! He's so upset, okay? Because it got delayed again. It was supposed to be coming out March 9th. I, it was supposed to come out back in 2018. I think it got announced 2016, maybe 2017. It's been delayed by many, many moons. Five years up until this point, essentially. All right, about four and a half years up until this point. March 9th seemed like a solid release date, but Ubisoft coming out and saying that they're facing major challenges. Things are going wrong, okay? And that they will not be able to release it until their 2023-2024 year, which starts on April 1st, which just feels like a great time for them to finally come out and say, April Fool's Skull and Bones was never real all along. You can't play the game. I'm you got a sea of thieves. You want what? Sea thieves what? Sea of what? Thieves. See ya. See you tomorrow. <laughs> but while you can't play Skull and Bones, the Sea of Thieves simulator anywhere, you can play GeForce Now on a Steam Deck and NVIDIA GeForce Now, as well as Valve coming out and talking about how there might be a partnership developing between these two applications, especially because it does behoove Steam Deck to allow for cloud gaming to be natively run on the device and it behooves 
NVIDIA to get more people using GeForce Now and paying for it. So it seems like a good match, especially with what I will continue to say is the underpower hardware on the Steam Deck and NVIDIA coming out and saying that there is no native app for the Steam Deck today, but they are interested in making GeForce Now on Steam Deck better, but they don't have any announcements on a native app coming to Steam, which would actually be really weird because you would have a Steam launcher for GeForce Now, which is essentially just a cloud computer that will launch your Steam game on a faster PC. So you're just, you're launching Steam to launch Steam and it feels like the exhibit meme. And I just, I also feel old cause like that show stopped airing when I was a child. It's not relevant anymore. Have they done anything like that since then? And I just haven't seen it. I don't know. I'm not gonna see any more news today because hot news is over. I'll be back with more things tomorrow.